This is English 201, week four, part five. Um, one of the things that literature and art can do is that if someone wanted to talk to you about how terrible work is, you might kind of tune them out because you've heard this shit before. Um, or, or maybe, or honestly, nobody would talk to you about work. They just feel like it's normal. Of course, everyone has to go to work all the time. Well, in other countries, they don't. Sometimes they just stay home when they're sick because they have universal health care. Um, but in America, it's normal for people to go to work even when they're sick because they're afraid they're going to get fired if they don't. Or they can't, or or if they miss a paycheck, or they don't get paid that day. They're going to be out. They're going to be out. They're not going to be able to live in their home, and they can be able to afford their car payments. So, like, what this story does is it gives you something really weird. This guy got turned into a bug, and then you watch it. And because it's weird, it's like, oh, this isn't realistic. This isn't about my world. This is about some weird guy who got turned into a bug. This would never happen in real life. And then the story is able to tell you all of these things about work and business. And you're like, man, this is sick. I can't believe this guy's so mean to Gregor. I can't believe they expect him to come into work, even when he's been turned into a giant bug. And then when you close the story and walk away, you go, oh, shit, my life is kind of like that. My family treats me like a horrible bug. My boss uh, is always angry at me if I do the slightest thing wrong and I could lose my job. So that's the that's kind of the the, the situation of it. Um, it allows you. It's a, it can be a metaphor for your world, and because it's strange, you don't tune it out. You just listen to it, and you go, "Man, this is crazy. They're treating Gregor like that." It's only later that you realize your boss treats you like that. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah, so, so his sister is crying at the bottom of page three. Was it because he had not got up and had not let the chief clerk in because he was in danger of losing his job? And if that happened, his boss would once more pursue their parents with the same demands as before, right? That, because his, Gregor's father owes money, and so he has to work for the company in order to pay that money, that money off. Um, okay, um, and, and he, he feels like he tries to make excuses, and he says, well, uh, at the top of page four, he says, a suitable excuse could easily be found for rudeness later on. It was not something for which Gregor could be sacked on the spot. Like, I'm not going to get fired immediately. I'll just think of an excuse later. Like, dude, don't you think being turned into a giant bug is like a good enough excuse? Um, but he's like, I'll, I'll have to come up with some kind of excuse that they'll believe. I'll have to think of it later. Um, all right, cool. This is going pretty well. All right, so... Um, also, I love the, the, the clerk who shows up says to him, you are causing serious and unnecessary concern to your parents. You fail to carry out your business duties on the top of page four. I'm speaking here on behalf of your parents and your employer. I really must request a clear, immediate explanation. This is interesting to me that like the boss shows up. I guess it's like a sub boss, like the assistant manager. Um, the, the guy that shows up is basically like the assistant manager. The manager is even worse, and he's a, you never meet him. Um, but he says right there that like I'm speaking on behalf of your parents. Do do you see? There's like a weird thing where like the boss and the boss wants him to work to make money for the company, and the parents need Gregor to work to make money for them because the father's business fell apart. So in a way, they're like the family and the business have teamed up to make him feel fucking terrible about not going into work. He has a perfectly good reason not to go into work, but it doesn't matter because they're like, the family needs money and the boss wants money and the boss wants workers and like, they won't let him go. So you, you get this, you get this, like your family should be where you go to get away from work. But here work and family are like teamed up so that your boss is like, you're in trouble. And I'm speaking here on behalf of your parents. Like, oh my God. And you can see it's like a nightmare, right? Like you do something wrong and your boss and your mom is mad at you. Um, but it speaks to the, it, that same kind of guilty thing because parents can also be like bosses where they expect you to be working constantly. Um, and if they see you not working, then you're being lazy and you're, it's your fault and you need to bring in money and what are you going to do to be responsible? So that sometimes living with your parents can be like living with a boss. It's like it's like you got a supervisor at work and then you go home and see your parents and they're your supervisor. Um and, and, and the, the pressures that they put on you are very similar, right? You feel guilty if you don't go to work um, and you're worried your boss is going to fire you. And, and Gregor would feel terribly guilty if he wasn't bringing money home to his family. Um, although it turns out his family are all fucking assholes. All right. Um, uh, and they tell him, like, your position is not that secure. You could be fired at any moment. Um, that is... He's been—he's never missed a day in 15 years, but they're going to fire him maybe today. 
Um, they make up some, they have some nonsense about like, oh, you were entrusted with money. I hope that's why you didn't come in because you were going to steal the money. He's been a trustworthy employee for 15 years. And your first thought when he stays home is that he stole money from the company, you fucking psychopaths. Um, uh, but this is true for a lot of employment in America is that you can work for a company for decades and they don't give a shit about you. They will say they give a shit about you and they will make you feel, say, I can't believe you're not coming into work. You know, we're a family here. You got to stay a little late after work so we can be a family. I got a lot of, a lot of business stuff is like, we're a family here. We're a team. Don't you want to be a team player? Don't you want to be part of our business family? And you can do that for 20 years. And then those motherfuckers will turn around and they will just fire you. They will just fire you one day and they don't give a shit because they can fire you and replace you with somebody else. Um, because that's life in America and that's life. And, and this is not America. This is Prague in like 1911, 1909, but it's very similar to life in America in 2020. So, um, really fascinating. Um, I fucking love this story. I'm getting even more excited teaching it. I'm having a good time. Um, okay, cool. Also, and here I think is the most important sentence in the entire thing is in the top of page four. It's right here. This is the this is my this is my favorite sentence in the whole thing. The, the clerk says to to Gregor, "Your turnover, meaning like the work you've been doing at your job, you're getting work done. Your turnover has been very unsatisfactory of late. I grant you that it's not the time of year to do especially good business. We recognize that, but there simply is no time of year to do no business at all. We cannot allow there to be." I know it's not a good time to make money, but there there is no such thing as stopping to make money. We cannot allow there to be a time when we are not doing business. Now, I taught this story back last January, um, and I thought that was a great line. But having lived under COVID America for a year, it's really it really feels important after COVID because that's what happened in America was people it was was people were like, OK, well, if there's a pandemic, people should not be going to work. Uh, and they shouldn't have to pay rent um, because they can't go to work. But if we want to keep people safe, keep them home, um, and we'll just we'll just pause. That's what that's what we needed to do to keep people safe was put a lot of businesses. Now, obviously, like you know, if you if you if, it, if you have an essential job, but like grocery store workers are essential jobs. Like, wait a minute, um, the well, we hardly pay those people. We don't pay those people very much, but they're essential. But also, we pay them like crap. What the hell? Um, so like we we do this th this idea that there can never be a time ever when business stops and that's what this last year has been like we could have controlled covid if we had stopped doing business for a couple of months but we wouldn't do it we refused we were like nope people have to go shopping people should be able to shop and people should be spending money people should be making money and landlords need to be paid and so we have to make money to pay the landlords well they should have just made it so landlords can go fuck themselves and you should have been able to just stay home and not pay rent and that would have solved a lot of fucking problems um but they didn't and that would have helped covid from spreading but they're just as just as the guy said 100 years ago, 110 years ago, it's a, it's just a true today. There can be no time where business is not done. We cannot allow it. And so we tried to have money making businesses running during a pandemic. What happened? Everybody got fucking sick. Um, and that's why it spread as much as it is. And that's why even now, a year later, we're not face to face. And I'm talking into my fucking phone. Uh, and really like I, 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 in my, in my parents' apartment, because I can't, my, my New York city apartment is too small to do these lectures when I live with someone else. So, ugh. okay. Um, cool. Okay. Um, and Gregor of course tries to act like everything is normal, right? He says, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just slightly unwell. It's an attack of dizziness. I'm just getting out of bed. Just a moment. You know, I, I, I had a small symptom of it last night. What symptom did you have of turning into a bug last night? Like, he's trying to act like it's completely normal. He says, you know, you always think you're going to get out of an illness without staying home. I'll, I'll be on the 8 o'clock train. Like, oh, my God. Like, the level of guilt and craziness. Like, he, he just can't imagine missing work. Um, he feels so guilty. Uh, and all he has done is missed the 5 o'clock train. But he could still be on the 8 o'clock train. Um, and he's losing his mind. Okay, doing good. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.